All right, so in this video, we're going to be showing how to craft armor using ABS plastic. So uh, ABS plastic is very similar to pickle barrel. This is a pickle barrel here. People use it for making armor. Uh, I've done a pickle barrel armor before. This is a bracer made out of pickle barrel. It is a great material to use. This one is just a bracer that has padding on the inside. Uh, the downside that I, the things I don't like about pickle barrel is that after you heat it up and it cools down, I find that eventually it always wants to uh, spring back into its original pickle barrel shape. So I always find that I have to constantly be heating it back up and reshaping it. Uh, the other downside about pickle barrel is that it's hard to paint. Uh, I have found some techniques to paint it pretty well, but eventually it does kind of chip off and uh, you just get blue armor, which doesn't really look too good. They do have other colored barrels. They do have black barrels out there, but I find blue is probably the most popular. Now comparing this to ABS plastic, this is an example of ABS plastic. Uh, ABS plastic takes heat, uh, I find, much better than pickle barrel. Uh, I find that once you mold the, uh, the, pick, the ABS plastic into the shape that you want, it stays in that shape and it doesn't reform itself. It's also black, which is always cool, and uh, the paint really sticks well to the, uh, the rough side of the ABS. So this is an example of ABS plastic. Uh, it does have a smooth, shiny side, and it does have a kind of rougher uh, side to it as well. Um, you can find uh, ABS plastic at Industrial Plastic and Paints in Nanaimo. Uh, or Victoria. Uh, you can buy a really big sheet uh, of ABS plastic um, about 8 feet by 4 feet for about $180. Uh, but at Industrial Plastic and Paints they do have off cuts at a 30% discount. Um, and I picked up this piece which is a nice piece uh, at that 30% discount in the off cuts. Um, and I got this for about 60 bucks. So this is a lot of armor. I could probably make thigh armor, bracers, gorgets. I can make a lot out of this piece. So it is relatively cheap. Um, about the thickness of the ABS, I like uh, 3 16 is best. Uh, a quarter inch I find is just way too thick, uh, really hard to kind of mold. And I find anything smaller than 3 16 is uh, just too flimsy to use. So I find 3 16 absolute best. Um, this type of plastic is legal to make armor at Ulfedner, our fighting club. Uh, Medieval Chaos, which is a LARP in uh, Duncan, they allow uh, ABS plastic. And reading the Marshall's Handbook of the SCA, they also allow uh, ABS armor to be made. So, things that I have made so far with the ABS plastic, I have made uh, Demi gauntlets. This is more for the SCA, but you can use them out of fed there. So I made some demi gauntlets with some padded gloves just underneath it. But it does have that base of the thumb coverage, which is needed for fed there fighting. But I've made those. I have also made uh, greaves, which fit over the lower leg like so. I've also made uh, this is. Um, thigh armor, so this would go over the thigh like so, cover up the knee, so I made thigh armor, this is actually SCA legal, and I've also made armor such as bracers and also elbow protection like so. Now as you can see, I don't put foam on the inside, uh, but you can, you absolutely can put foam on the inside, you do want to have uh, the plastic with foam against the skin. You don't want to have just the plastic on the skin because the plastic will uh, take the, the shot but the, pressure, the, the shock of it will go through the arm and cause harm. So you do want to have some kind of type of padding. So what I do is I don't like padding this. I like to grab some type of sports padding which I wear. So this is uh, karate armor for the forearm and just the basic padding for the elbow as well and then I would put the armor over that. So I have my uh, ABS over padding. Uh, the reason why I like doing that instead of just putting the foam on is that once this gets sweaty and gross, I can just take it 
and throw it right into the laundry just as that. But as I mentioned, you can put the foam on the inside of it. That is just fine. So the first thing that you need to do to craft uh, armor is you need to get a pattern. Uh, you can find patterns on the internet. You can talk to your crafting community. They can share uh, patterns or you can make your own. What I usually do when I make my own is I go to the dollar store and I purchase uh, some yoga mat or camp mat foam. This is an example of that. I picked this up for about two bucks at the dollar store. And then you just create your own pattern. You either lay it over, if you're making thigh armor, you can put it over your thigh and just make the pattern that you want. Um, on the example we're doing today, I have a couple of friends here. We're going to be making them gorgets. So this is a gorget pattern. It's going to wrap around like this. The end product looks something like this. It is a complete circle that goes all the way around. As I mentioned, I don't have foam on that, but I like to use a uh, hockey padded bib, which goes over the neck. And then the gorget, which it is plastic, so it's bendable, it just wraps around. And then you have your gorget, again, plastic with padding. And this is legal for Ofedner. Uh, for the SCA, uh, they require uh, a back uh, armor on top of the, or a back plate on the gorget. So this is an example, same pattern, uh, except the opening is on the side. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put an extra plate on the back, uh, which will fit right on the, the vertebrae there, which is SCA legal. This leather here is double ply, uh, and it is legal for the SCA. So I have two different patterns, but we are gonna do uh, the one that opens up in the back which is this one here, and again, it's nice to have the hockey bib, you can just throw it in the laundry afterwards. So, once you create the pattern, which is this guy here, you are going to draw it out onto your ABS plastic. So you want to try to save as much ABS plastic as you can, but you lay the pattern down, you take, I like to use a white uh, pencil crayon, to trace my pattern onto the black ABS. All right, so we have our pattern traced out onto the ABS. Now we have to cut out uh, the ABS, uh, or the, the shape of the armor out of the ABS. So what I use, I use a jigsaw. You do have to use uh, a metal blade. So this is the kind of blades that I use. It is for metal. Uh, that's because the teeth of it uh, are very small and very close together compared to uh, wood blades uh, because those teeth are really big and very wide spaced and they really grab the material which you don't want. Uh, so you want to use uh, metal blades because the teeth are very tight. Now uh, ABS does have a, a bit of a low or lower uh, melting point than pickle barrel. So what you have to do, you can't just grab the trigger and go full blast and cut this through because the friction of the blade uh, on the plastic will cause heat and will actually melt the plastic uh, and it will reseal behind it if you go really fast. So what you have to do is you have to go at half speed and just take your time and uh, trace out uh, the pattern. So again, uh, if you're a kid, uh, let your parents do this but make sure you're wearing gloves, eye protection, any protection you want, just uh, remember safety first. So you just take the, uh, the jigsaw and just slowly All right, so we have the, uh, the armor cut out, but I don't know if you can see there, but there are a lot of little rough edges on this when you just go and cut it off. And you definitely don't want to get that right against your neck because uh, it'll cut your neck. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be smoothing out these edges a little bit. Now the angle, since this is going flat and then flat across and flat down, uh, we want to round it off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to the grinder and I'm going to grind down this angle here, this angle here, and then I'm going to flatten it so it's actually kind of domed around. Uh, and I'm going to use my grinder to do that. Uh, and you're just going to go through the whole entire thing and make sure that all the edges uh, are nice and round.
So the edges are now all ground somewhat smooth. Um, just one thing to remember that if ever you have a sharp corner, you want to grind that down so it's a nice round corner. Uh, you don't want anything sharp uh, edged in your armor because it's just going to pinch you. So now that I've ground this all down, it's still a little bit on the rough side. So what I like to do is I usually take a uh, high grit uh, sandpaper and go over the edges really quick. It does go relatively fast. It doesn't take a heck of a lot of pressure to start sanding this down. And then once I go over the rough, then I go over it with a bit of a, a smoother grit uh, sandpaper and uh, just really smooth it off uh, so that when it's uh, up against your skin, it's nice and smooth. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that with the whole entire edge of this. All right, so the next step, now that we have it cut out, all the edges are nice and smooth, now we have to heat this up so that we can mold it. Uh, I find the best temperature is between 250 or 275 degrees Fahrenheit. I have mine set at 275 and you cook it for about 10 minutes. Now I've never had this stuff actually melt on me, but just in case, I do put a layer of tin foil just in case it does melt. You don't want this melting uh, in your oven because then it will just stink and you're going to be cooking food in there. So put a layer of tin foil. As I said, I've never had this stuff melt on me. So you just put it in the oven like so. I'm making two gorgées, so I got a second one here. And we're going to put it in at 275 and I'm going to put a timer on for 10 minutes. Alright, so it's been 10 minutes. The timer has gone off. Uh, a good way to test it is if you can see that it is bendable, which is kind of what you want. Uh, it is hot, so please wear gloves or if your kids have your parents do this, okay? But you can take it out and you want to quickly get it into the shape that you want. So this is a gorget. I want to have it in a circular pattern. I am going to put a little lip on this end here, but it is to quickly get it into the shape that you want. This ABS does cool off fast, so this is kind of the shape that I want it in. You do have just a few moments. I'm going to close this up to the other gorget in there, but it's already starting to get into that hard shape. But that is about right. There you go. So that's a good uh, gorget uh, shape. Now the nice thing about this and how ABS works is that now it's already in the shape that I wanted. But if I totally mess this up, uh, I could put it back into the oven and just let it reheat probably for only about five minutes. But then I can again go back at this and uh, shape it a little bit more. If I just need to do little tweaks, uh, I can just take a heat gun and you just heat up the specific spot that you want and then you just bend it at that point and again it should be good. But that is how you shape it and uh, that is a, a pretty good gorget there. That's your finished product. So uh, that is how to make an ABS armor. Um, please check out our Ulfednair Facebook page. Uh, also uh, we are going to be posting this on our Ulfednair YouTube channel. I do recommend uh, subscribing to our channel as we do have plans on making other videos on how to craft shields, weapons, and also sword fighting training videos. So thank you very much. Hope you liked it.